Garmagat, um, Taoiseach, I spoke to you last week around the concrete, defective concrete blocks um, situation and what needed to be done there. And today uh, I want to raise with you um, a, a similar issue, but your government promised to introduce a redress scheme for homeowners living with the Celtic Tiger era building defects. Legislation was published last year and emergency funding was to be made available for fire safety works. I visited, uh, I'm doing this on behalf of Mary Lou Macdonald, my party president, I visited homeowners across the country, including in her constituency, impacted by serious uh, fire safety and structural defects. No legislation was published in 2022, and eventually in December, almost a year after it was promised, applications for emergency funding was opened for owners manage and management companies. Since then, over 130 OMCs have applied for this funding for essential fire safety works. However, to date, not a single cent has been provided. As with so many other government schemes, the fund was announced and opened before your minister had his homework done. Can you provide me with an update on why this emergency funding has been delayed and when it will be paid out? And also, can you confirm that the long-promised legislation underpinning the wider scheme will be published and if that scheme will open in 2024-2025? Well, thanks very much. I, I, I'll start there in reverse order. So thanks, Deputy Ward. I think that's a constructive suggestion. I'll check when the review is due to be completed and see if we can make progress in relation to that idea of a social housing passport. I'm aware in parts of my own constituency as well, you know, county boundaries sometimes don't reflect the way people live their lives, where they work, where they go to school and, and, the, and, and the likes as well. Uh, Deputy Marlene O'Connor, um, who raised the issue of the need for an upgrade of Bagnallstown wastewater treatment plant. I'll get her an update in relation to that, and I take the point she makes about the importance of having the infrastructure in place uh, in relation to housing. Deputy McAuliffe, I do think it's important to acknowledge the 100,000 homes that have been delivered in the lifetime of government, because while we have more to do, and we all know we have more to do, th these are real homes that people are living in, that families are living in, that people who didn't have a home previously now in a home, and I think that's, uh, that's worth acknowledging. In relation to the Old Ballymun uh, shopping centre site, and your view that the LDA and Dublin City Council need to come together on that to provide a uh, solution, I'll raise that with the Minister for Housing uh, and ask that he uh, give a view in relation, uh, in relation to that uh, as well, but I'm sure that's a, an issue of concern for your constituents at a time when we need to develop uh, more homes as well. Deputy Barry, uh, in relation to, to rent pressure zones, um, so you're factually correct in terms of their uh, the, the fact that they are due to be to lapse um, later on this year. I believe they're working. I believe they're working well. The government hasn't formally made a decision on it, so I don't wish to preempt that. Uh, but I see their merit, and I'd like to bring. I'd like to see a decision made early to provide absolute clarity for people. But it, it is a matter that requires a government decision. Uh, but I think the rent pressure zones have played an important role, and I think the need for them continues. That's my view. Uh, Deputy Omerku, just on the retirement uh, age for firefighters, and that time timeline I've heard from a few of my own constituency in relation to that too. I know there's a lot of people getting near the the, re the retirement line now who are willing to stay on. I know Minister O'Brien is supportive of this and worked hard to achieve it at Cabinet. I'll talk to him and, and Minister Donoghue and see um, see about clarity. But I understand how... Does it, does it, yeah. No, I got it. I, 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 I definitely heard you uh, in relation to that. Uh, to Deputy, uh, Deputy Conway Walsh, raise, raise the issue, excuse me, of uh, defects in apartments in both the interim scheme and, and the longer one. I, I'll, send you a, I'll send you a written note, but in short, in relation to the interim funding, up until the end of March, 128 applications are being progressed um, are being progressed across 26 local authority areas representing over 13,000 residential units. Approximately 80% of the units affected are located in the four Dublin local authority areas, but I am aware of reports saying that there's been difficulties with local authorities. My understanding is the Minister, Minister O'Brien, met uh, as recently as yesterday with representatives of the local authority fire service and the City and County Managers Association uh, to discuss the matter, so I'll get an update for you on how that meeting went. In relation to full, the full remedial works, uh, which you asked about also, Work is advancing to draft the required legislation, which will include the scope, the eligibility and the conditions of the remediation scheme. It's expected the draft legislation will be published later this year and the statutory scheme be in place uh, shortly after that. And um, Minister O'Brien is working on the legislation. He's seeing it as a, a matter of priority, whilst also wanting to make sure that we get a scheme uh, that, is, that is fit for purpose. But I'll send you more detail, uh, more detail in a note. Deputy Tobin, thank you for... Um, Thank you for providing me with that information, which I'll certainly familiarise myself with in terms of um, the, the trawl, for want of a better phrase, that you've done in terms of vacant uh, local authority homes uh, in the county and the comparison between turnaround times uh, for private and public. I can accept that there, there can be some gap 
uh, but certainly the difference that you've outlined is very significant at a time when we urgently need more accommodation. So thank you for uh, the constructive engagement on that. Uh, I'll talk to the Minister for Housing and I'll come back to you uh, in writing on the issue, uh, on the issue as well. Uh, Deputy O'Callaghan, the need to regulate the management companies and where are we at in terms of the draft section 18 and 19 of the Multi-Unit Development Act um, with the Minister for Justice uh, and indeed fulfilling our programme for government commitment. I'll speak with the Minister uh, and get a timeline for you on that and come back to you if that's okay. Uh, Deputy Wynn, additional emergency accommodation needed in County Clare. Let me talk uh, to the Minister uh, and the local authority through the Minister and see what more we can do. You've, you've highlighted some progress that's been made, but not enough uh, in terms of its composition uh, as well. Deputy O'Sullivan, I'm not personally aware of that situation in relation to IPAS, and I'm very aware that government policy is to move away uh, from reliance on the private market. Now, we have to be honest and upfront about the times that, that will take, um, but I'm not aware of that, but I'll make myself very aware of it. I'll talk to Minister O'Gorman and I'll come back to you um, in writing on the issue as well. Uh, Deputy Boyd Barrett and Deputy Murphy both raised the issue of homelessness um, and indeed highlighted a number of, of cases of Neve and Anthony, their children of Jennifer uh, and two children and a number of other, a number of other cases uh, as well. And look, well, I think you said you can stand up here and ream out facts and statistics and whatever else and not just to do that. I mean, I would point out though that behind those facts and statistics is progress being made in relation uh, to social housing. Last year we saw over 22,000 uh, social homes Sorry, excuse me. Last year we saw over 22,000 social homes at various stages of construction, and we saw 12,000 social homes being delivered through various means through both our local authorities and our approved housing bodies. That was the largest level of delivery uh, in many decades. I think you have to go back to the 70s. We've also provided a land acquisition fund with 125 million euro in funding uh, to the housing agency as an initial level of funding because we do want to provide solutions for Neve, Anthony, Jennifer, uh, and crucially for children. We did see in the monthly figures a very small drop in the number of children in emergency accommodation, a very small drop in the number of families in emergency accommodation, but, but it's nowhere near where it needs to be. Uh, and that's why we will continue to look at all forms of different housing options, uh, including an acceleration in relation to, to social housing. 